Now let's take a trip to west central New Mexico and catch a glimpse of the native way of ranching with the Laguna Pueblo tribe. It's a unique blend of culture, science, and innovation that keeps them growing strong. Reporter Jim Witt has more. We're Native Americans, so we've always been involved with farming or ranching in one way or another, agriculture. You know, throughout the history of our peoples, it's been something that sustained us ever since we can remember, or probably don't even remember anymore. John M. Romero is a Pueblo of Laguna tribe member and also affiliated with the Pueblo of Isleta in New Mexico. The Laguna people, as well as most native peoples in the Pueblo, have a history of agriculture and working with the land as far back as the early 1900s. Although conditions throughout the Southwest have always been harsh, the native peoples have worked with the land rather than against it to carve out its existence. Families, you know, from way back, um, John's parents and grandparents, my grandparents and my parents, you know, they had a, or I guess, I don't know if they instilled a passion for us, but we've always loved coming down here ever since we were little kids, you know, no better place in the world to be but here. During the 1930s, the federal government purchased two land grants for the Pueblo to relieve overgrazing. Tribal members were given the option to relocate their livestock onto these grants. John's grandfather, Benjamin Romero Sr., chose the Antonio Cedillo grant where John continues to raise Hereford and Hereford Cross cattle today. It's a good way to use the land, protect the land, because there's a lot of cultural sites and other things that are out here that, you know, we don't want to be developed with commercial development or residential developments or things like that. But, and also, you know, we've been traditionally, this is a way of life for, for our people. It's not all about, you know, big corporations, you know, putting buildings on on your land. It's more about respecting the land and what's there naturally given to us. Taking care of, let's say, the, the water and the, the grasses, the native grasses that are there for us instead of, you know, going in there and overgrazing and not really thinking through on what the situation is. It's a customary belief for the Laguna tribal members that the earth is its mother and that we all need to do our part to protect, enhance, and improve her. They also believe that we are all stewards of the land. One of our beliefs is that you know all the animals, all the plants and the trees and everything that's here is alive and they all have, just like you and I, we all have feelings. So we try to handle our animals accordingly to work with the land because that's also part of our belief is that you know the, the land is our is our mother. Native way of ranching is you know being out there to take care of your animals if they're sick. You know you take the action necessary to you know vaccinate them, do what you can for them. You know if there's no water, you get out there and you do it yourself or. You let the others know, say you need help in hauling water and, you know, just coming together as a family, you know, giving each other advice if you see somebody doing something wrong or, you know, giving them a better way or easier way in doing different tasks out there. Irrigation was one of the keys to making the land prosper. Many of the irrigation practices that were first used are still in practice today. For the past 20 years, the tribe has worked with USDA to improve water distribution systems and convert windmills to solar power. The main thing is trying to develop the water, I think, because around here in the southwest it's pretty dry. So we need to spend a lot of time trying to develop our water resources. And we do that using the EQIP grant programs through the USDA and trying to, you know, do things like this with the solar, trying to develop the waters that are already existing. The biggest challenges are getting the funding together to to handle the improvements that we need. You know, our biggest problem is um, drinking water or drinkable water. We have artesian wells, but a lot of them are salt, salt, you know, have a lot of mineral content. So just getting good drinking water to the, to the animals and getting it spread out to where we use all the land. I was very proud of the last drought that we went through in the late 90s and early part of this decade. You know, they, uh, you know, we could have been here with no grass and everything, but they, you know, took it upon themselves to cut their herd down and do some things that you know, where the land came back as soon as we got moisture, it came back very healthy. And so we just re need more numbers right now to keep, keep everything going well. 
As president of the Cedillo Cattle Association, John Romero works to promote economic welfare and encourage members to band together and sell livestock as a cooperative group. He is keeping an eye towards the future and exploring profit opportunities for native raised beef. I think there's kind of a uh, hidden market as far as the native peoples are concerned, not only at Laguna, but the other Pueblos and other tribes. And maybe to have the tribes band together to start marketing our beef as not just Laguna beef or other tribes, but as Native American beef, if you will. Especially nowadays with the economy as bad as it is, we need to keep our products and promote our products even more, especially with this country of origin labeling coming in soon and you know, it's already there. And I go to the supermarket nowadays and I see a lot of our meat products are not even from this country, they're from other countries and we need to protect ourselves. Reporting from New Mexico, I'm Jim Witt for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. John Romero shared that in the old westerns, the natives used to say how when greeting someone, and the Laguna Pueblo tribe has been showing how to get the job done by honoring the value of hard work, caring for the land, its animals, and the tribe for generations. For more information on the Cedillo Cattle Association, visit cattlemanthecattlemen.org.